if there is something that probably most of the racing fans, F1, Moto Grand Prix, WRC, Indy, etc. can agree on is that the tobacco advertising ban was a bad move. Now of course that we cannot blame everything to this ban, because modern motorsport sucks for many reasons, even though some, especially the ones of two wheels, have managed to stay true to their identity. Now the main problem that I have with this ban is that it was like a middle finger to the most of the fans, because being responsible for your own action nowadays isn't considered a thing. Anyway, hello guys and welcome back to another video and here is the story of tobacco in motorsport. Before talking about tobacco in motorsport, first we should talk about tobacco advertisement in general and about advertisement on motorsport. First let's talk about the latter one. Now, sponsorship, at least for teams, can be considered a relatively new thing. And this has mostly to do with the fact that how motor racing worked back on its early days. The first races were organized mostly by wealthy aristocrats, but sometimes newspapers also would organize different races. So the prize money came from one single pocket. But things will start to change a bit with the creation of National and International Motorsport Federation in the early 1900s. Now, with races being better organized, more money was thrown into these titles. But the true big changes would only come after 1908. Until then, cars were a luxury, which only the richest people could afford. So car makers had only one thing to do to promote their cars. Just go and win races, in order to put your name in, in the map. But everything changed, when the Model T came into the game. Now more people could buy a car, and so a whole new market was created, and with this market becoming bigger and bigger every year new companies started showing up, in order to support the demand for oil, tires and other parts. And here is where we see the first sponsorships, even though at this point sponsor only backed titles and tracks, and not the team, only after the first world war we start to see teams and drivers being backed by sponsors. And this picture of Barney Oldfield from 1918 is probably the best example. And most of the sponsorships would be similar to this. The big change and the basic foundation for the modern team sponsorships came in 1948, when NASCAR was founded. For the first time, teams started carrying names and logos of different brands, which for the most part were mechanic shops. Meanwhile, in Euro, the trend only arrived in the mid-60s. Team Gunston became the first for Formula 1 team to have a sponsorship livery, which appeared at the 1968 South African Grand Prix. And this actually was a cigarette sponsorship, since they were carrying the name and colors of the Gunston cigarette brand from South Africa. And shortly after, other teams started doing the same thing, with Lotus being one of the first big uh, teams to, to have a sponsor. Also in 1968, sponsored liveries started appearing at the mall. In Euro, these new liveries started replacing the old national colors, the red of Italy, the green of Britain, the blue of France and the silver of Germany. Even though many teams started using these colors as part of their new sponsored liveries.
From the beginning tobacco was heavily advertised. We can find tobacco ads since the mid 1700s, but they really started to cut on only after the first world war. This was also the time when most of the most known tobacco names were created. For the most part, cigarettes were advertised with posters, and only after the 50s the first TV commercials started showing up. But a big change for both the tobacco industry and actually motorsport would come in the early 70s, with many countries banning tobacco advertisement from TVs, radios, newspapers, magazines, and from all the conventional media. But there was a loophole, and all the tobacco companies went after it. Even though TVs weren't allowed to air tobacco commercials, there was no problem with a car or a jersey carrying a logo of a cigarette brand. And here is where everything changed. Tobacco companies went after every sport possible, but motor racing looked like it was the perfect one. Now, there are three reasons why motorsport was so appealing. First, were all the health issues, so they just couldn't advertise football clubs, basketball teams, etc. But these two other reasons were the real important ones. Cigarettes were considered kind of a rebel and a bad boy thing to do back in the day, and still is for most part. So racing drivers were perfect for this job. And the third reason, the liveries. Cars and motorcycles were just perfect to advertise cigarette brands. The logo of a cigarette brand is the package, and so they just had to paint the vehicles just like the packs and the job was done. So they would have the packs on the faces of the public for at least one hour. Like I said, the advertisement band was a big change for motorsport, since crazy money started floating for every team and driver. So big was the change that now teams could have big budgets and at the same time they didn't have to build cars. And this changed the game forever. 